We're back up here on stage at the Heartland Cafe, where every Saturday morning we bring you another edition of the Live from the Heartland show. Yeah, it's happening. And we're having a great time. And uh, we want to thank Twin Peaks and that nice music from their album, Sunken, that uh, was the segue into this segment. And we want to say hello to Paul and Mary Wozniak, who are usually here every Saturday morning doing some wonderful work on uh, the video and handling guests, that kind of thing. Yeah. And they are up in Green Bay doing some kind of politically conscious uh, endeavor of some sort, I'm sure. Yep. And uh, we do want to thank our we love you guys. guest, Salvatore Consalvi, for uh, rescuing the day and uh, setting up uh, Hal's uh, new camera. So we'll have this on YouTube at www.youtube.com slash Heartland Media probably in the next, uh, within the next week. You know, um, I, I forgot to mention to folks, this morning while we're on the radio, uh, there's a document shredding uh, event at David Orr's, I mean, all things environmental at ecology. Uh, at Joe Moore's office over there at Greenleaf and Jarvis. So bring your, bring your do shredding documents over there today. It's a... Uh, Plus, there's flu shots available at today. Well, I want to know there. what's going on in the, the world of polling. I want Don to really fill us in on what he thinks is happening. So, Don, what do you got to say? Welcome, Don. Good morning. Thank you. Good to be here again. Uh, it's always good to have you. With another couple of weeks, it's uh, slightly scary. Yeah. Uh, we look at all of these uh, polls going in uh, 17 different directions, and... Uh, Without a good uh, uh, detector of uh, odors, BS uh, detector, that would be. Exactly. Uh, it, it, it takes a, a, a lot of analysis to see what's going on there. Uh, I could give you a lot of technical details about why this poll is better than that poll, or another poll is worse than another poll. Uh, the problem is that the media crunch them all together uh, without, uh, with the exception of Nate Silver on 528.com, uh, uh, right. the New York Times, uh, they do not evaluate the quality of the polls and they'll just crunch them all together and the averages look pretty bad. Uh, for example, we see a Gallup poll uh, this week showing uh, uh, Romney ahead, ahead by seven points, yeah. and we see uh, uh, an NBC Wall Street Journal poll showing him three points, showing uh, the opposite. It shows uh, Barack Obama three points ahead. Uh, there are defects in that Gallup poll, uh, technical defects. They have, uh, it's overloaded with Republicans. And unless we see, uh, you know, some remarkable turnaround where Republicans really uh, uh, throw as many votes as Democrats do, and they, they are the only ones who've picked that up, we have to discount the thing. Uh, we, and uh, I think the fairest thing to say when we look at uh, the highest quality polls is that it's still a very, very tight race and you could say Obama might be ahead by a point. Uh, it might be even, um, even if you were to say he's behind by half a point, it's all within the margin of error of all the good polls. Now that's on the national level. Uh, that would be scary enough uh, because sometimes in the last week or 10 days, uh, things start to break and they could break dramatically as they did when in the last week, uh, uh, Ronald Reagan, who was running even with Jimmy Carter, won by an overwhelming landslide with the last minute deciders. Uh, my judgment is that if there's going to be a break, it's going to be more toward the Obama side, but you have to uh, allow um, for aberrations. Uh, so why, why would you, what makes you say if there's a break it will be go towards President Obama's re-election campaign? Uh, because what we're seeing in uh, the more detailed polls of uh, all of the battleground states, right. uh, Obama is still maintaining a significant lead and that reflects what is really going on uh, in the country. The, the battleground states are not 
special isolated incidents, except in one or two cases, such as Ohio, which we can talk about. Mm -hmm. But uh, the battleground states are spread of America. And what we see when we look inside those polls is that uh, Obama is ahead on all the important factors that make people vote. He's running about even on the economy, if not slightly ahead of Romney. Uh, on jobs, he's running a little bit behind. But then you get to uh, issues such as uh, who is for the middle class? Who is most like me? Who is going to do things for my kind of person? Who is, in fact, more likable? Uh, and these are all the intangibles. When we look at those, uh, we see, at least I see, that the break is more likely to go in favor of those issues, uh, particularly at a time when uh, things like the unemployment numbers and the housing numbers are looking good for Obama. Uh, and can I, the pivot here is still Ohio. We can talk about that. Yeah, we, we can't. I spent six weeks in Ohio four years ago, and um, I'm a little chomping at the bit to get back there. But it, just to digress one second, what do you think, how do you think um, everybody did in the debate this week, and what do you think of the process of debates as the voters now experience it? I mean, we had, we had a room, three rooms full of people watching the debate together, a phenomenon. Screaming at, the, screaming at phenomenon Romney, cheering I, Obama. I totally love, you know, uh, citizens taking it seriously and listening. Even though they could go home and listen in, in their separate homes, they, you know, decide to listen together for support. What well, do you, what's your take on the use of the debates, how they're going? <laughs> Well, of course, these aren't really debates. These, well, are, these, these, these are entertainments, but that's a whole <laughs> uh, separate kind of issue. Uh, this year, um, unlike most years, but like one or two years, the debates seem to have actually uh, changed things or moved the numbers. Uh, the first debate, which was watched by something like 70 million people, showing a remarkable citizen interest, yeah. uh, a really remarkable citizen interest. Uh, as we all know, Obama did one of his worst jobs, and Romney did an amazingly good job, and that really moved the needle, as we say. He was, uh, Romney was three to five points behind, and he went to minimally even, uh, and to some points ahead, and picked up momentum. Now, this, the debate with Joe Biden uh, against young Ryan uh, stopped some of that momentum, but not all of it. Mm -hmm. And then this past Tuesday's debate, uh, which Obama clearly won, uh, he won even more overwhelmingly with the general public than the early polls showed. We think that stopped the momentum there and has brought Obama back to uh, the situation I described where he's probably a point ahead in uh, the uh, uh, national situation and uh, better than a point ahead in uh, uh, the battleground states and on the electoral college I would say he is uh, somewhere he needs 270 electoral votes and I would say he's so going to wind up with somewhere between 280 to 85, and maybe even up to 300, depending on how uh, a state like Virginia breaks. I'm hoping 290. 290. Uh, no. so you, um, I, I don't care if it's one vote. I don't care either. That's right. Um, so once again, Chicago uh, activists are traveling to neighboring states to affect the outcome, and which I think worked pretty darn well four years ago, as far as Indiana, uh, Wisconsin, and uh, Iowa concerned. They've they've written off Indiana this year, but uh, Wisconsin and Iowa are still needing work. We've got people engaged to that degree. You said the uh, number of folks who watched the first debate showed an incredible uh, level of interest. What is, given the voter suppression tactics that have been engaged at a new low, I should say, a new level. They're still trying it in Ohio as well as Florida, yeah, et cetera. I, I was going to bring it around to that. Is in general, starting with the voter suppression tactics and seemingly a lot of victors, victories 
for voters thus far in the courts well, still being played out in o Ohio? I would say most of the voter suppression tactics, at least the large-scale, uh, quote, legal ones, uh, that have come either uh, through legislatures or through the actions uh, of a uh, secretary of state or what have you, most of those have been erased. Yeah. Now, what we don't know is how uh, the scare that they put into people and the kinds of uh, 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 private, quote, private actions such as putting up billboards in African-American neighborhoods saying, you know, voting illegally is a crime and so on. We don't know what the hangover is on that, but my sense in general is that um, in the most important state, Ohio, uh, that is not going to be uh, a key factor. I think, I think Obama is, at least at this point, too far ahead in Ohio so that uh, even if uh, the, the uh, hangover of voter suppression drops them a point, we'll still do all right. I mean, isn't it true that the, the Republicans must win Ohio to win, whereas Obama doesn't necessarily have to win Ohio to well, win? From, from w w without going through the whole roster of 11 states, um, Obama has to win Ohio plus one more uh, which could be uh, Iowa, New Hampshire, uh, Colorado. I think Colorado is being uh, understated. It's looking like a toss-up, but I have a hunch she's going to wind up uh, picking up Colorado. And, and Nevada is interesting right and, now, uh, too. And Nevada... They're putting I am some less, time in there. I'm less worried about Nevada um, because the big, big vote comes out of the uh, Las Vegas area, and uh, there is a huge Latino population there. And the betters are ours. And in addition to that, you've got a very wily uh, guy named uh, Harry Reid, uh, <laughs> who, if you'll remember, was supposed to be running eight or ten points behind some crazy woman f two years ago, right. and he wound up winning by ten points. Harry Reid is, whether we like it or not, a good One political boss. And I, he was a boxer. I, That's I, right. I, and, I agree. and I think he's going to uh, deliver uh, Nevada, um, maybe even comfortably. Uh, Colorado does not have such a, uh, uh, a figure there, but they've got a good senator, and uh, I, I, I think they're going to finally pull it out, although that's going to be uh, a, a, a bit tough. Ohio is this very special case because it is working again because of what Obama did. Now, it's my feeling in that first debate, if we can go back and rewrite history, when the last question came, what can government do, uh, Obama could have actually put this election away by saying, look at Ohio. Look at Ohio. This is what government can do. <laughs> The private guy here, the, the big uh, venture capitalist, said, let him go broke, let him go bankrupt. Government stepped in, saved an entire industry, saved the uh, 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 workings of an entire three states, really. We you know, forget about Michigan. We talk about Ohio so much. Um, but Michigan was looking dicey at one point. It's also uh, one of the home states of Romney. And, uh, this guy has a lot of homes. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of cars, a lot of homes, and maybe a lot of wives we don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, they, you know they get, they, Harry Reid does, too. Yeah, they, you know, the, 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 old, the old gag, uh, uh, Romney believes that uh, marriage is uh, between a man and a woman and a, and woman, a woman and a woman. <laughs> Right. Speaking right. of marriage, uh, I was in Whoops. touch with um, speaking of which, with Melva Oaken, who's an old friend from uh, the Rising Up Angry Days, and she's down doing good work in North Carolina where she lives. And we were corresponding when, uh, as we do around the radio show, some. And I asked her how things were in North Carolina, and she didn't uh, she didn't really know how it would turn out. Uh, she thought there was a little bit of a battle going on in the black community over the gay marriage issue. And right. I don't know if that would play a factor. I don't know if North Carolina is even viewed as in play for Obama these days. It was surprising he won it last time, but they really battled for it. Any thoughts on that? 
Uh, it looked uh, very close for a while. My sense is that it's opened up. I don't know if the gay marriage is really uh, the issue there, but uh, North Carolina and Florida both were surprise wins for Obama last time. Uh, one or the other is still possible, but less likely. I uh, would say along that uh, eastern seaboard, I am uh, most concerned about Virginia. Uh, I think we're going to pull Virginia off, but uh, if, if we pull Virginia off, we certainly don't need North Carolina or need Florida, nice as it would be to have them just uh, uh, as, a, a, as a matter of helping along the Congress. Yeah, Virginia and Florida are both total toss-up at this moment, as far as the polls right, right. as of yesterday go. I want to know... Um, what, Michael? Well, I had one other thing that I want to get off my chest, and that was Don <laughs> did mention uh, that there was some good news for Obama recently about the unemployment numbers going down, and uh, he also, the, the new housing starts has changed. Right. Uh, there seems to be a lot of things breaking his way. Uh, he also, I noticed the other night, had a really good night on TV. He was on the Letterman show with a repeat. He was on the Daily Show, and he was at the Al Smith dinner. And uh, while he only threw jabs at uh, Romney two times, I believe, Romney really was kind of, I thought he was a little out of offline, uh, about seven or eight times he went after Obama. Any thoughts on, on what a night like that on TV will do for a guy who's running for president? Oh, I, I don't think that night really counts. Uh, uh, it, I, I think the only, like, single night that actually counted heavily was that first debate, unfortunately. Um, Monday night's debate, which will be on foreign policy, I expect uh, Obama to win well. Um, what Obama has started, uh, you may have heard, is uh, he's talking, uh, rather than calling uh, Romney a flip-flopper and so on, which has been overdone, he has invented a new disease called Romnesia. Yeah. Oh, which, nice. Which, which seems to be catching on a little bit. It's, it's tweeted all over the place. Uh, he describes Romnesia as uh, uh, not remembering what the he difference said the between before. what you said the day before and the yeah. difference between what's that and on your website <laughs> and what you said three <laughs> days before. Uh, you know, you could almost ask Romney if he's ready to come around and say he's pro-choice again, you know. Uh, right. But uh, uh, the, the marvelous line uh, that Obama used, I think you're going to see over and over again in the uh, shows this weekend, is uh, Romnesia. Uh, fortunately, if you come down with it, uh, you detect it, uh, under the new health care law, uh, <laughs> it's a pre-existing condition right. and you can be treated you for it. You can be it. treated. <laughs> That's only if we re-elect uh, President Obama. You know, the, the, Dan, you've been uh, playing in the field of politics a long time, run a few campaigns, run a few historic campaigns like the first Harold Washington one. Doesn't it feel good to sit in a room and look across and see Harold on the wall. I see that Harold on like the wall. That. She's um, talking about the Salcedo 40-year exhibit of wonderful posters up at the Hall. Um, yep. But, I, you know, I, I continue to be impressed by the evolving tools utilized to get to voters in this campaign. Um, I was impressed four years ago with Vote Builder and that whole process of making calls and just moving through. I, I made 40 calls yesterday to uh, Iowa in the afternoon from my own office. Um, and now, for example, my very left of center phone uh, company, Credo Action, has got people making calls to de defeat the Tea Party 10, they say. And I, I feel like there hasn't been quite enough emphasis on getting a, a different set of characters in the Congress um, in order for the president not to be filibustered a uh, record number of times. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about both um, people's access to the campaign from their living rooms, if you will, and how we look vis-a-vis -vis the, the Congress, Senate and well, House. There's dozens of ways of people to participate. We have all kinds of new tools, you know. I don't know if you were even aware of it, but uh, uh, last year, last uh, uh, four election, years ago. four years ago, uh, the Obama people found ways of putting advertisements in video games. Oh, nice. And, wow. Uh, uh, just all kinds that of ways of, 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 of uh, brainwashing. Yeah. Right. 
And you know, <laughs> finding finding people, detecting people. Uh, uh, sometimes one must say almost bordering on, on privacy invasions, finding out so much about people yeah. that they uh, will find persuadable. The technology keeps uh, evolving, and uh, uh, people you know, can participate in many ways, such as you do right in your living room. You don't have to make a trip to Wisconsin. You can uh, call Wisconsin. That's you right. Can meet with people. You don't, these days, you don't even have to go to a call center. I know. I mean, I, it's, but what amazes me and what gratifies me is, as I made these calls yesterday, people did talk to me. Yeah. You know, yep. people did, those who answered, and a whole bunch of them answered who weren't the voter I was calling, um, but I engaged with them anyway. I said, so are you a registered voter? Have you made up your mind? And mm -hmm. I actually talked to that elusive, indecisive, uh, or undecided voter, which is amazing. I bet after talking to you, right. they're going to go for uh, Obama. I'm hoping, baby. All right, so I want to know about, we only have a little bit of time. That's always a, a challenge for, uh, in, well, it's a challenge. Uh, for a guy who talks too much. <laughs> how about the Senate and how about the House? What do you, what do you um, see happening? I think we're going to retain the Senate uh, by approximately the same margin we have now. We could lose one or gain one, but uh, we'll hold the Senate. Uh, Elizabeth Warren? Uh, Elizabeth Warren, I think, is going to pull it out. If she's Woo! anywhere near even in the polls, and she's running ahead right now, but if she's anywhere near even in the polls, uh, the uh, huge Obama landslide that will be in Massachusetts will carry her in.